Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Accelerated Technology Laboratories in another edition of our 2021 LIMS webcast series. My name is Ken Ochi. I'm Manager of Global Marketing and Customer Relations at ATL. And today's webcast is entitled LIMS, The Secret to Growing Success in the Cannabis Industry. Today's webcast is ideal for cannabis testing laboratories considering LIMS solutions as the answer to addressing their need for efficient sample management, data quality, and regulatory compliance. Here's today's agenda. I'm going to begin by talking about some of the current challenges cannabis testing laboratories are facing today. And I'm guessing here that as I go through this list, I'll see some nodding heads as you agree with some of these challenges. I'll then turn to what we believe is an ideal answer to some of these challenges, and that would be LIMS or Laboratory Information Management Systems and lab automation for the laboratory. I'll drill down into some of the key LIMS features for the cannabis industry, and then I'll wrap up with um, a live Q&A. And for this, uh, anytime during this webcast, if you'd like to ask a question, you can type your question into the questions box located on your GoToWebinar dashboard, or if you'd rather verbalize your question during the live Q&A, if you wanna raise your hand, uh, which is also, there's a little hand icon you'll see on your dashboard. You can click it and then we'll be happy to unmute you. All right, well, I'm sure I don't need to state this fact, but today's laboratory is an environment of challenges. And this is especially true in the cannabis sector. Now, beginning on the upper left of this slide, uh, I've tried to highlight some of the common challenges you all face on a daily basis. So first, many of you have a wide range of challenges to focus on as a startup operation. And this could include all the decisions related to a new business like building out the laboratory facilities, uh, purchasing instruments, and hiring the lab staff. Uh, then you add to it all the planning around your go-to-market strategy and implementing your business systems. Another key challenge that uh, demands focus is ensuring that you are in full compliance with federal and state regulations as a licensed cannabis testing laboratory. Uh, the requirements will vary by state, and as an example, the California Bureau of Cannabis Control requires all cannabis testing labs in California to be accredited for ISO 17025, which is the uh, ISO standard specifically for testing and analytical laboratories. Data integrity is an ongoing challenge for all laboratories, especially those who have not yet invested in lab automation. The impact of inaccurate data is a red flag for auditors and could result in citations and fines if not addressed. Um, and having a good solution for reporting is key to a laboratory success. So being able to create and modify reports and automating the process of communicating results to customers, so for example, uh, automated emails. Uh, this is great for lab efficiency. Traceability is definitely very important for cannabis testing labs, especially for standards like ISO 17025 that require the ability to generate an audit trail. And then finally, as more and more states pass laws that approve of medicinal and recreational uh, cannabis, this is going to just naturally increase the demand for cannabis testing laboratories like yourself. So as a result, I'm sure that you're looking at trying to gain any competitive advantage you can to differentiate, differentiate yourself uh, versus your competition. So I'm sure that's also another one of the challenges you think about on a regular basis. Now cannabis testing includes testing for the potency of cannabinoids, of course, but also includes testing for a variety of residual solvents, contaminants, and pesticides, as well as foreign material like yeast and mold. So being able to manage the data generated from all this testing in a timely fashion is job one for your laboratory. Now for many laboratories, just starting out, the decision is to use Excel as their data management system. Of course, this is a very low cost solution, but there are some significant downsides that need to be considered, especially if there are requirements like ISO 17025. 
And this includes the fact that Excel provides no audit trail, which is uh, important for traceability and poor security. And here we're talking about the fact that um, in a uh, data management system like this, if you're using Excel, you have no ability really to control who is able to enter or edit results. Uh, it's something that's very, very important if you are uh, in a uh, regulated environment. Uh, high labor costs refers in part to the fact that all results would need to be entered manually, which is a very time consuming and error prone process. Now to address the weaknesses of using spreadsheets as a data management solution, many laboratories choose to implement a LIMS for effective day-to-day -day management of their lab operations. So LIMS plays a leading role in these areas, including lab efficiency, lab productivity, data integrity, uh, traceability, as we've mentioned previously, the use of not only the LIMS, but also incorporating into it some automation tools that I'll talk about here in a few minutes, uh, data accessibility, communication, and here we're talking about primarily communication to your customers. So as you complete your testing, I'm sure your customers would like the results delivered to you in a nice, uh, uh, nicely presented report. So um, you should be able to use the LIMS to not only generate the reports rather easily, and if you need to modify the reports, you should have that capability. But then once that's done, you should have some way to um, easily communicate those results to customers, either through the use of automated emails or possibly by setting up a, a web portal where they can get secure access and view, uh, download, print uh, those reports themselves. And then finally, resource utilization. So one of the questions we typically are asked early on when we're having a conversation with um, especially startup laboratories, the uh, question is, why is a LIM such a valuable tool? So I wanted to just point out some high level benefits and, and things to keep in mind as to why the uh, LIMS is such a valuable tool. First, um, LIMS will eliminate error prone duplication of effort. Uh, you'll be able to transcribe data information from bench sheets to the LIMS or any other electronic format rather easily. Uh, automation increases uh, traceability, which is an audit trail for any changes to results. Any good LIMS these days should have the ability to uh, timestamp any, any activity that any of your authorized users to the LIMS would do in the LIMS uh, would be tracked by the LIMS. So basically, you know, uh, if, when your analyst is doing some testing in the laboratory, um, you know, there'll be timestamps as to when they start the testing uh, maybe they, uh, they, uh, somebody will approve the result or validate the result. Anytime there's any type of activity related to that sample, there'll always be a timestamp and there'll always be a, a documented note as to who made that change or who made, who completed that activity. So there's a lot of um, details that you'll be able to look into when you have a LIMS. Uh, privileges and permissions actually goes along with what I just said. So basically, when you uh, implement your LIMS, you'll have the ability to obviously not only um, determine who's going to have authorized use of the LIMS and then obviously give them user access to the LIMS, but also uh, you'll be able to control what your uh, authorized users will be able to do in the LIMS, whether it's just entering results or maybe for a supervisor or manager, you'll give them additional uh, responsibility and activities to do like uh, validating or approving the results, or if there's a change that needs to be made uh, in one of the results, you'll also provide higher level personnel with that capability. And then finally, as noted in the uh, photo there to the right, um, a LIMS will really help towards moving you away from paper and moving to more of a paperless world. Um, and as you can see, uh, by doing so, you'll eliminate the stacks of paper that uh, some of you might have on your desk today. Now, in addition to the LIMS itself, there are some key laboratory automation tools that should be considered as part of a total LIMS solution. Uh, this includes tools for positive ID, uh, and here we're talking about barcoding and RFID, or uh, otherwise known as radio frequency ID. Uh, ATL is a strong component or proponent of uh, barcode labels and scanning technology, which I'm pointing out here. Uh, we also like RFID as a similar solution, although we're not seeing a lot of demand so far for it. Um, with barcoding, 
Uh, the limbs should be able to support uh, the ability to utilize 1D or 2D barcodes, as well as RFID uh, chips. Um, with barcoded labels, users can quickly log in dozens of samples with a barcode scanner. Uh, there's no manual entry of sample numbers, which means a reduced chance that the wrong number will be accessed. And by labeling inventory items, it's easier to track their location and usage by scanning pre-configured labels. Finally, uh, managing a chain of custody or CFCs is easier when including a barcode on the form itself. That way your analyst, as the sample is moving its way through the laboratory, all the analyst or analyst would need to do is scan that barcode on the form and then all the information regarding that sample would pop up on the screen. Now, a key feature that should be made uh, available or should be available in any good limbs designed for the cannabis industry involves the internal chain of custody. Now, as you know, laboratories that test controlled substances are required to perform chain of custody uh, and transactional information above and beyond what a typical uh, chain of custody would provide. So that would include uh, transaction details, what was transaction, the quantity, units, uh, who performed the, the testing, um, who verified it, and then uh, on disposal, you'd also need to be able to uh, document the weight and quantity, as well as any comments appropriate for the testing of that sample. You also need to include inventory by location, by type, as well as uh, the amount of time that the sample has been in storage. And then finally, many laboratories leverage the limbs and integrated barcoding to check samples in and out. So you can track all that activity as well um, as part of your audit. Another example of lab automation that ATL usually recommends in virtually any limbs project is integrating the scientific instruments to the limbs. It's really a no brainer. You eliminate the manual transcription of data generated by the instrument and any instrument manufactured really in the past 10 years. And here are, you know, obviously just a uh, small sample of the instrumentation vendors that you may be using or planning to use in the future. But any uh, well-known uh, instrument a manufacturer, uh, especially in the last, last 10 years, can easily generate an output file that any good limb should be able to uh, import and use. So the benefits of instrument integration include uh, increased accuracy and throughput, uh, avoids duplication of effort, enhances productivity, and typically uh, or laboratories will see a return on investment within one year. Now this is just a simple diagram of how instrument integration works with ATL's LIMS products. And I imagine it's a similar process with other limbs, but you would need to confirm that with the other limbs providers. Now, in most cases, the flow of data is unidirectional from the instrument to the limbs. Although uh, there are a number of manufacturers out there that support bidirectional integration. So you'd have data coming from the limbs going back to the instrument. And there are gonna be times when that's, uh, that's, that's a nice benefit to have. Um, the uh, data is exported to a location on a network as a uh, typically it's either going to be a csv or an excel file although um, many limbs providers including atl will provide some uh, the ability to input data in these other file formats in addition to uh, importing results from instruments we also have customers who want to import test results coming from contract laboratories so here the lab would typically provide a spreadsheet form that the contract lab would complete and then emails that form back to the lab for upload to the limbs. Uh, once the data is imported into the limbs, the lab can go through a normal peer review process for validating and approving the data in the limbs. And then down at the bottom here, I uh, just want to also mention that an error log should generally be generated for anything not imported or if there was an issue during the import. And obviously we, we have that feature as well. The use of a LIMS with graphical dashboards is an excellent example of how the laboratory can monitor test results in real time. Uh, the charts can be color coded to predefined control limits. So if a user sees red or yellow on his monitor, these data points can be investigated right away to address a possible out of compliance situation.
Another key benefit for LIMS users is the ability to generate a variety of charts for QA, QC, and trending analysis. And to provide additional graphing options, there are well-known third-party applications like JMP and SAS that can be integrated within the LIMS. And so we do have customers who use these third-party applications. Um, and so uh, by working with us, we can actually embed uh, these uh, third-party charts and graphs into the LIMS itself. Now, good LIMS should provide standard reports like the Certificate of Analysis, or C of A here, uh, that provide rich features like automated reporting, which saves time, improves accuracy, and provides customers with faster turnaround in real-time reporting. Uh, the um, LIMS, uh, good LIMS, should also be able to provide for the uh, use of digital signatures. And um, finally, uh, benefit of LIMS with this type of reporting features would allow for uh, the report to be automatically emailed or accessed from a secure web portal, as I had mentioned before. So a smart investment in LIMS and laboratory automation can result in some very significant benefits for the cannabis testing laboratory. And this includes a uh, result of, of high quality data uh, that uh, you know has been tested and validated for accuracy, uh, especially if you're using the instrument integration and eliminating a lot of the manual transcription and possible um, human error. Uh, that really is going to go a long way towards ensuring that high quality data. Standardization of processes within your laboratory, and that would include the ability to incorporate the workflows that you have established or defined within your laboratory. Uh, and your quality management system, you can incorporate the, uh, and configure the LIMS to incorporate those standard processes, which is very, very important. Uh, you'll gain time, efficiency, and traceability with LIMS and lab automation. Obviously, as we had talked about before, the ability to achieve and maintain regulatory compliance and uh, adherence to accreditation requirements like ISO. Uh, you'll gain uh, performance improvement in speed, uh, a more richer array of metrics that you can um, monitor, reliability, repeatability, uh, visibility, and uh, security within your limb system. And then finally, and a point that uh, many of our customers will mention to us once they've actually impl implemented one of our limb solutions, and that is the elimination of manual entry allows more time for analysis. So uh, it actually, in many of our uh, customer organizations, has improved uh, team morale, company morale, because instead of having to spend time doing the manual entry, uh, that's been eliminated by the use of LIMS and lab automation, and it allows more time for what these analysts were hired to do and really love to do, and that is analyze the data. Now, traditionally, a LIMS deployment was known as on-premise. Uh, this is where the LIM software was installed on a local server and accessed by computers on the company's internal network, um, either the IT department for that organization or maybe somebody in the laboratory would be responsible for the regular maintenance of the LIMS, and that includes you know, backing up the uh, database, uh, upgrading the software when there are new uh, versions available, et cetera. However, over the past five years, there's been a general acceptance of software as a service or SaaS as a viable option for many organizations. And if you're not familiar with this term SaaS, uh, you probably are uh, more familiar with the term cloud, right? Cloud computing. So basically it's the same thing. Um, and the benefits to a SaaS deployment are low cost of entry. Um, obviously the LIMS provider, or in our case, we have a very strong nationally known uh, data center that's our uh, data center partner. And so any of our SaaS implementations or deployments are uh, managed and uh, configured by our data center partner. But in any event, they provide all the hardware, the security, the IT support, customer, all the customer has to do is uh, boot up his or her uh, device in the morning, uh, go to a browser, log in uh, securely, and then gain access to the limbs without having to worry about all the backend maintenance that's required of a traditional on-premise implementation. Um, Another benefit of uh, software as a service deployment is prompt deployment and is fully 
scalable so as the needs of the customer grow in terms of size of the database or performance let's say they add more users or maybe more locations uh, it's very easy for the data center to scale up that uh, implementation of the LIMS for the customer there's a very rapid return on investment and I'll talk about that here in a second and then finally going back to the first point which is low cost of entry in a uh, SaaS deployment or cloud deployment basically it's a pay-as-you-go model so uh, you don't have to you know budget and write a check for fifty thousand a hundred thousand dollars up front uh, you basically have to uh, pay for the uh, ongoing use either on a monthly or in our case we have some customers who are on a quarterly payment basis now unlike um, well this slide here is actually taken from a presentation we did that really focused on the uh, comparison of uh, a uh, traditional on-premise deployment versus software as a service and uh, we uh, did a uh, cost of ownership study uh, or uh, analysis uh, you'll see here in the bottom right hand corner is a URL or a website address and so that we, we used a tool from this uh, website basically that allows you to do your own total cost of ownership analysis that so you can do your own number crunching to see if maybe a SAS deployment makes sense for you but in this case this was a um, scenario where we assumed the customer or the limbs user was um, in this case it was an environmental laboratory you know could have been food and beverage it could have been cannabis uh, I think it was 25 users um, they had purchased a number of our modules um, and then we basically did a comparison of uh, on-premise implementation over 10 years versus a software as a service implementation and you'll see even in year one there was a difference of a little over a hundred thousand dollars and you're asking well, what, what accounted for that difference well in the case of the um, on-premise customer they had to purchase the server the um, uh, database software any type of security software they have to pay their IT staff to help support the limbs on an ongoing basis so all that adds up and, and and so that accounts for that uh, initial difference of a little over a hundred thousand dollars versus a, a software as a service or staff and, uh, deployment you'll notice that over 10 years that gap generally stays constant it actually increases because over that 10 years you have to figure that you're going to replace the server at least once you're probably going to have to uh, replace the hard drive a couple of times possibly because um, you, know, you might have a hard drive crash you'll also have to probably factor in uh, increased salaries for your IT staff to support you um, salaries bonuses that type of thing uh, so it adds up and so uh, every situation is going to be a little different but I did want to point out at least one example where um, there are some organizations that are making these decisions around going with the SaaS deployment based um, uh, not only on the benefits that I talked about but also the financial considerations now on the topic of regulatory compliance the question is why ISO 17025 um, and I wanted to point out some of the reasons why our customers who are ISO accredited uh, gave us as to what the benefits have, to, have been to them so ISO 17025 accreditation proves that a lab has a universally accepted quality management system uh, provides accurate testing and calibration results that they need to maintain and then it performs tests against international standards and generate results that are accepted for different regulatory bodies uh, the last thing I'll, I'll mention here is that uh, many of our customers who uh, have gone through uh, an audit uh, for ISO have mentioned that previous to implementing limbs um, they were finding that uh, the audit might take two and a half to three days well once they implemented the limbs and were able to show the auditor that they had a, a um, you know a robust and proven uh, laboratory management system in place the amount of time that uh, the auditor needed went down dramatically partly because um, you know an individual from the laboratory could for example walk through the history of a sample by going to a monitor turning on the limbs and then with a few mouth cl mouse clicks be able to demonstrate the history of that basically the traceability of trace back of that sample to the auditor giving the auditor a great deal of confidence that um, you know this laboratory had their act together all right I wanted to wrap up on this part of the presentation by giving you a high level view of how a ideal limb solution would look and function 
and highlight some of the components I just reviewed with you. Um, it begins with my simple but accurate definition of a LIMS, and that is a laboratory information management system or LIMS is a software based system with features that support a modern laboratory's operations. Now everything really begins in the center here with the LIMS running on a SQL database. This could very easily also be a representation of the cloud, right? So it could be the data center where the LIMS is located at. Uh, the SQL database is important because again, as your uh, business grows, uh, you're going to need um, the software, the SQL software to grow or maybe some additional capabilities that you're not using today. And so uh, the LIMS and the database will be able to grow with your laboratory uh, as your business grows. Now along the left here is what I call the solutions curve. And here is where you'll find the majority of the uh, functions uh, that a lab would uh, perform on a daily basis. So, um, that would include, uh, for example, the use of uh, barcode and scanning technology to log in samples, uh, use of uh, uh, data grids or um, dashboards, uh, report writing, uh, mentioned instrument integration. And then finally, I just wanted to wrap up here. We're seeing more and more demand for data coming from the laboratory from other parts of the organization. So the ability to basically share uh, valuable data coming from the lab to another department uh, is growing in, in importance. And so I wanted to point that out as well. Now, there are two functions on this slide that I want to point out that require the use of the internet. The first would be um, remote data collection, which is ideal for field sampling. Probably not a, a big demand on your part in the cannabis industry, testing industry, but I just want to point that out. More important to you though, would be uh, giving remote access to your customers to testing status and reports. And so again, we have a solution ourselves at ATL for this type of uh, um, capability through the use of a web portal where your customer, all they need to do is basically have access to the internet and a browser, and they um, will be given secure access, not to the limbs, but to the reports and the data and uh, real-time status of what's going on in the laboratory that they're working on for you. So just want to point that out. All right, so now you're probably asking yourself, okay, I need, I know a limbs, how should I get started? Well, we've been doing this for over 25 years now, so we've really been able to develop a process and we actually do have a um, deployment and implementation process we call the ATL Advantage Plan. But I wanted, to, for the purposes of today, just give you an idea as to what we would recommend for you as next steps. And that would be um, what's called a needs assessment. And uh, this would be something where you would uh, bring in an outside consulting resource, somebody who um, you know, can take an unbiased and independent look at your operation and then be able to give a, um, a recommendation as to what your next step should be. But basically, uh, this could also be called a, a gap analysis. That's what some uh, uh, people would know this type of task as. Um, so to begin with, you do the needs assessment. Uh, in this phase, you'd be doing requirements gathering. Um, once that needs assessment is complete, and basically it's kind of a roadmap to how you would get from your current state to your future state, which is uh, fully implemented LIMS. Um, next step would be to evaluate LIMS products on the market, go through a selection process, have the LIMS vendor provide uh, demos, um, be able to talk to some of your, their customers, and then you'll make a decision, and then you'll start working with the LIMS provider on the project itself and so there's project management configuration there's a number of other tasks or activities that'll take place before you actually go live and that would include implementation testing and verification you want to set up a, a plan for superior training you want to be able to run in parallel the current method for how you uh, do your testing in the laboratory generate reports etc and then at the same time you want to run in parallel with the new limbs and ensure that you're getting the same results from uh, both solutions. Once you're satisfied that the LIMS is um, generating an uh, accurate and valid data, then you'll decide to go live, you'll go live, and then after you go live, uh, you'll still have a great relationship with your LIMS provider in terms of providing outstanding support. Uh, at the bottom here, I just wanted to provide a simple five-stage LIMS implementation process, starting with plan, then you move to define or def defining requirements, uh, analyzing, configuring, 
going through the whole deployment process and then finally going live. All right. Well, with that, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to uh, spend with me on this webcast. Uh, I will follow up by email with a link to the webcast recording for those who missed today's presentation or would like others in the organization to view it. Uh, please email me for any follow-up questions or comments after today. Obviously, we're going to do a Q&A now, but you can uh, jot down my email address. I'll also be able to provide you with uh, slides if you wish. When I send you the email, you can just let me know uh, to send you a copy of the slides. Uh, we would like to talk to you about your laboratory, and uh, so we will be following up promptly, and we look forward to speaking with you. And now, I just want to move on to our live Q&A segment.